Hello, hello, happy Taco Tuesday. I don't know why I'm just in the mood to sing today and it's probably not a good idea. And I got my girl with me. Happy Taco Tuesday. It's my favorite. <laughs> if you haven't seen my little, my little Taco Tuesday sign, the intention was for her to be this like little bitty thing like down here in the corner and she takes up the whole screen and I'm just, I'm here for it. I love it so much. Happy Taco Tuesday. I am here for our weekly live and I would love it if you would tell me where you're watching from. Let me know if you have any questions today. We're really just... um kind of going into a little bit about today's podcast episode of The Profit Podcast. So let me pull that up. If you don't already listen, this is my weekly podcast that is all about helping entrepreneurs start, launch, and market their podcast. And yeah, we, we have a lot of fun. Today's episode was a doozy. It was a really good one. I actually told a bunch of stories in today's episode that I, I probably mentioned here or there on other podcast episodes, but I went deep. I went deep in today's stories. And I actually wanted to bring this up because um, I think the often overlooked piece of podcasting is storytelling. And we know this, right? We all know this at our core. We love the podcast episodes that we here we relate to we enjoy the stories that the host is telling and i think that we as online business owners entrepreneurs people that are looking to monetize a podcast and make money with it we often think of what's the like the fastest i was gonna say i was gonna say fast and quick together i almost say <laughs> i don't even know what word smash i was trying to come up with but we want to get to the fastest way to make money this is, people come to me all the time and they say, what is the fastest way to make money with a podcast? And I think that when you have that top of mind, I'm not saying that that's wrong. I think that's awesome. I think it's fantastic. I'd love to see more people making more money with podcasts. But what I often find is people just want to be very cut and dry and they just leave a whole bunch of opportunities on the table and they don't focus on storytelling. And and speaking of that, I'm just like, oh, that's a content idea. Like we need to talk about that, you know, here on the YouTube channel and our Facebook group uh, and on the podcast. I think that we should talk more about storytelling because we all inherently have this. I listen to a lot of public speakers. I can't even tell you how many TED Talks I've watched in my lifetime. Before I started listening to podcasts, I would literally put this on <laughs> when I was at my corporate job. I would have TED Talks on in the background and I would listen to all these talks. I watched how people moved on stage. I felt like I got a PhD in like public speaking by watching these other people doing TED, TED Talks and public speaking things. And um, storytelling is just so powerful. It's so, so powerful. And if you're overlooking it or storytelling, y'all, there's hair everywhere. Sorry, super distracting. But I mean, as you can imagine, I get a lot of it and it, I, I find it everywhere, everywhere. But storytelling is one of those things that without it, you're just going to have a how-to or a step-by-step -step of here's three things, go do it, done the end. And maybe that's your content. Maybe that's your style. But I like to share stories that are getting my audience to remember, right? Because we are so, so much more likely to remember something if there's a story behind it because it gives it a deeper meaning. And so all that to say is if you want to hear an example of storytelling and what that could look like, I want you to go listen to today's podcast episode because if you look at, actually, I bet I could share... I'm going to show you the outline for today's episode. This will be this will be a fun little exercise because I know y'all love seeing behind the scenes of everything that's going on and I want to show you my Asana project plan. If you've never watched, I have a YouTube video all about how I use Asana and Google Sheets to plan my podcast, but this is a really really good example. Okay, so 
Let me share my screen. Let me share my screen with you. I don't know why. I just feel like singing everything today. I know I should probably, I should probably stop. Crystal, please stop singing. We really don't want to hear it. Um, oh, let's do this new little thing. So look, y'all, do you see how many bullet points? There's um, one. <laughs> There's basically one bullet point for today's episode. One. And then I have the other pieces that I wanted to share. These are resources that I used for, you know, outsourcing. Because that's what it was all about. When to outsource your, your podcast task. But I knew when I started talking, as soon as I started recording this podcast episode, I was like, oh, I've got to tell the backstory of why I feel the way that I do about outsourcing your podcast content. So that was really important for me to relay that to my audience, the people listening, because they needed to understand why I felt the way that I did about outsourcing and about work in general. So I told a bunch of stories about um, work and some of my first jobs. <laughs> If you want to know some funny stories, if you want to know a little bit about like insight into uh, who I am as a person and why I am the way that I am in certain aspects, go listen to today's episode and you will hear it because I talk about some of my favorite jobs that I've had, some of my not so great jobs that I've had and why I think it's so important for all of us to understand pieces of the puzzle pieces of the process before we outsource it. And I wanted to make that really clear. So today's episode is all about outsourcing. Uh, it's not always the best option. And it's not that I think that forever and ever you should do your own podcast stuff. I don't, I don't. I think that if you have the funds to hire a podcast manager, or hire a production person to help you run your show, absolutely do it. But I wanna make sure that you understand all of the processes First, you understand the best ways that you can go about your podcast workflows before you outsource. So there's so many reasons and I go a lot deeper into them and I feel really strongly. Oh, it says the sound is gone. Can y'all not hear me? Can y'all not hear me? It says it's working on my end. So um, let me know. I can turn it up. I don't know. That might get a little scary because I know I can get pretty loud. Um, yeah, it says the sound is gone. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Uh, it says that it's working on my end, but we can test this out. Let's make sure that you can hear me. Testing, testing. One, two, one, two. If you don't know this already, that's what I do whenever I say mic check. One, two, one, two. All right, look, it says. It doesn't say that it's live right now. Hang on. Stand by. Because it says that it's working on my end. That's why I'm still talking to make sure that you can hear me. So let's see. Boom. Let's see. Okay. Give me one second. Because I want to see what y'all are seeing. Tell me in the comments if y'all can hear it. Because otherwise I've just been talking for like 10 minutes by myself. That's not fun. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I can hear it. I can hear it. So I don't know. Okay, let me know if you can hear it because now I was, you scared me for a second, but it's working because it looked like it was working on my end. But um, outsourcing. So there are a few different ways that you can outsource your podcast tasks. And like I said, I think it's one of those things that if you can, if you have the means to do it, by all means, outsource whatever you want to. Your editing, your transcriptions, your social media, any of those things. But I think at the end of the day, the biggest takeaway from today's episode is you got to know how it all works. And the reason why I say that is because I see a lot of people getting taken advantage of in the podcast space and it really grinds my gears. <laughs> it really frustrates me when someone comes to me and they say, oh, well, I've been paying 
a production manager. I've been paying a launch manager. I've been paying this person, that person X amount of dollars to help me with my podcast, but they're getting ripped off. They're getting ripped off because if they would have done all these things themselves, they would understand it should not take like someone billing you 10 hours to edit one podcast episode. Guys, don't no, no, no. If that's what, no, 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 no. Like that pisses me off. Honestly, I said it grinds my gears. It pisses me off straight up. <laughs> Whenever I see people getting taken advantage of by people that are just trying to say, oh, you need to outsource all of this because dot, 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 give any a number of reasons. So go listen to today's episode. Let me put the banner. Where is it? Right here. Okay. So Today's episode, episode 305, it's what I was showing you right here. Um, and I think that it could be really helpful. So the reason why I went back and I showed you how long the, um, the actual outline, the plan, you know, when I showed you my Asana, this, the reason why I showed this to you is because you can see there are four things. There's four bullet points here. That would have taken me maybe two minutes. Maybe. I could, this whole podcast episode could have been two minutes long if I just said, do this, do this, do this, and do this. There's four bullet points. Boom. That's a podcast episode. Two minutes. But you will walk away from this episode that is actually 32 minutes long because of the stories that were added in. This is why storytelling is so important and why I think that we can't overlook it. I think that we have to concentrate more on how we tell relevant stories on our podcast, what that can look like. But I think it's also important to notice when your content is boring. I'm just going to call it what it is, right? If I were to just tell you, oh, look, here's these four bullet points. You need to learn the platform and then outsource. And then you need to know how to use the platforms and go through your workflows. You'll be able to know what you want and it'll save you time and money. That's boring. There's so many questions after that. It's like, what does that even mean? What, what do these things mean? So in order to make this a good piece of content, I told stories. I, ta I talked about working. I talked about sweat equity. I talked about what it means to understand how these different platforms work and what that journey is like for myself. And I just think it's really important to tell relevant stories. These aren't rabbit holes, y'all. They're not tangents, rabbit holes, going off in a totally different direction than what you promised your audience. You have to stay on topic and stay on track, but the more you can tell stories, oh my gosh, it just, it makes it, it just makes it so much better. It makes it so much easier. And I think that it's important to, to know when to do that because it doesn't always equate to just turn on the microphone and tell all the stories because if they don't have a point, it's not really, it's not really effective either if you're just telling stories for the sake of telling a story. But if you can have your main points that you want to make because these are the, the four points that I wanted to make with this podcast episode. And then say, where can I make this better? Where can I make this more interesting? Where can I tell a story that I know will help my audience? And that's really the key is not just a story because I want to tell a story. Where can I tell a story where it's going to help my audience. This is the question that we should be asking because storytelling in a nutshell, and this is actually why I'm so obsessed. Y'all, I watch so much TV. I watch so much TV. I'm not even ashamed about it. People are like, oh my gosh, like I could be so much more productive. I guess I should say I don't just watch TV. I study TV. I study movies. And I got to tell y'all, speaking of tangents, we're going to go on one for just a second. I promise it's related. I watched... <laughs> Titanic yesterday. I don't know why. 
I don't know why. Y'all, that's a three hour movie. <laughs> I was doing some laundry. I was cooking dinner. I like would turn it on and turn it off whenever I was doing these different tasks around the house. And I just wanted to see, did this movie hold up? Is Titanic really all that I had it in my mind to be? 100% it is. <laughs> it's still such a fantastic movie. Oh my gosh, I cried like I did whenever the first time I saw it. Uh, I have a whole story about Titanic and why I think it's like top five, top top five movies for me. But um, I go back to the story. I go back to the story of this movie and just telling it like how everybody kind of saw it. It's this historical event that happened, right? It was just, here's the facts. There were this many people alive whenever they left and then the wreck happened and then this many people died, period, the end. I mean, we could sum up the whole story in two minutes, a minute, 30 seconds. It didn't take me very long to say that. But what makes the story so incredible is the storytelling behind it. It's all the layers. It's the characters. It's the people involved. It's, you know, this person was hired at this point and then they brought in this person. Then you meet this character and then you see this one and then you see that one and then you see, oh, there's conflict, there's drama, there's, you know, humor, there's hope and then there's disaster. Like there's all the levels of story. And I think that this is really something that's been brought to my attention because I'm writing again, which I've been writing for a while. Actually, I have, if you've been around here, you know, I already have, I have my journals. So this is my newest one. I had a bullet journal for a while. Now I have a lined paper. My husband, he's so sweet. He was like, I know you like to write. These were on sale at Costco. <laughs> so here you go. And I'm like, okay. So I write like, look, y'all, these are my emails. I work workshop promo emails. This is what I do. I write these. I write my emails. If you did not know this, whenever I have a promotion or my weekly Friday email, I write them in a notebook and then I make it happen. And then and then I, I'd go from physical analog to digital in the online space. Why do I bring this up? Why is this important? Because I can story tell better in an actual handwritten note than I can if I just start typing. I don't know what it is. I, I don't really know um, why this works for me, but it, it works and it doesn't work for everybody. And I totally, totally understand that. Yeah, Diane says, I study sitcoms. Oh my gosh, Diane, we could probably have a million conversations. The same thing, I listened to Jerry Seinfeld yesterday on a podcast and he was talking about, and I'm not a huge Seinfeld fan. Oh, nobody, nobody come at me <laughs> with that. But I definitely learned so much from watching on the sidelines from a distance, how Jerry Seinfeld constructed a story around his own life. And then he eventually just turned it into this thing that snowballed into what we see Seinfeld as today. Even though I, I haven't watched every single episode ever created of Seinfeld, I know the basis behind the storytelling of how it works. And again, going with sitcoms, I watched Friends. I've watched so many other shows where I, and like Schitt's Creek isn't a sitcom, but it's one where if you listen to my other podcast, The Potty Report, I'll put it up here. So this is my other podcast where I talked about what I learned from the show Shit's Creek on creating that binge-worthy content. I also talk about Ted Lasso. I've talked about other shows that I'm obsessed with. And I just think it's so important that we constantly look at ways to create story from something that would otherwise be boring. I've had so many people come to me. Oh my gosh, if you are in the space of finances, insurance, um, legal matters, anything that on paper is like, oh my gosh. And I know not everybody feels that way. I know not everybody feels that way. But I can tell you there are times when people come to me and just straight up say, I don't know how to create a podcast because my content is boring. They, they just say it. They're like, my content is boring. What I create is not exciting. It's not sexy. It's not something... 
that people want to hear about, my default is, well, you don't have good stories then. <laughs> like, and people get offended. Like, like my content isn't good enough. They like, we've never had like an actual altercation of me going back and forth with someone, but I imagine their defenses go up immediately. And they're like, what, what do you mean? Like my, why would this not work? And I say, it can work. You just need better stories. You're not giving juicy enough details. You're not giving great examples because if everything's just black and white and there's nothing entertaining about it, there's nothing to really draw someone in. Why would they come in and why would they stay? That's the even bigger thing. People are always asking me, how can I grow my podcast? How can I grow my audience? How can I get in front of more people? And I'm like, well, are you telling good stories now? Are you creating really good content? Because if you're not, even if you bring all these people into your world, they may come for a second and then they're going to leave. You got to give them a reason to stay. You got to give them reason to come back every single week, come back for something new or come back for something that is worthy. It's binge worthy. It's like, oh my gosh, this is so good. I cannot wait to see what Crystal's up to this week because she tells the greatest stories, right? This is one of the things that I'm aiming for. I hope that you come back every single week and you can definitely tell, I will say this, the podcast episodes where I don't embellish and get really deep into story, they don't perform well. Those episodes don't. They really don't. Maybe YouTube videos because YouTube is a different monster altogether and a lot of people just want cut and dry, black and white, shortest answer possible. But in a podcast, you have the creative freedom to tell more stories and really get going, <laughs> Diane. Not a fan of Seinfeld, them's fighting words. I know, I know, I know, it's okay. I, I understand, I understand. People have told me this before. It's just, it's, it's what it is. I always stay on the channel to see who wrote and directed the episode. Oh my gosh, Diane, we're like cut from the same cloth because I do this too. I always wanna know who wrote this and you talked about The Office. I know which ones are written by Mindy Kaling and BJ Novak and which ones that Stephen Merchant and Ricky Gervais came on. Like I'm a full blown office fanatic on understanding just the difference b between like who directed this one and who wrote this one and how it's different. And I think that it's important for us to understand it. Now, this doesn't mean you have to go and study sitcoms. This means look at other creators and what they're doing. Whether it's an author, there are specific authors that I love. I had committed, if you do listen to The Potty Report, I'd committed to reading 10 books before the end of the year because I had just been lacking on reading and I'm gonna be um, going on vacation pretty soon. And I was like, you know what? I, that's when I'm gonna get my reading in. I just finished a really good book, oh my gosh, by Anthony Doerr. And it's... Um, Cloud Cuckoo Land, so good, so, so good. Oh my gosh, if you wanna study storytelling, go read Anthony Doerr's book. He also has All the Light We Cannot See. It's All the Light I Cannot See, All the Light We Cannot See. Anyway, either one, it's a Pulitzer Prize winner. It is so fantastic, but what he does with his stories is he keeps them short and sweet. His chapters can be like one to two pages. Sometimes it's just a paragraph. And this works for me because I have, I guess, I'm super impatient. <laughs> super impatient when it comes to reading. Um, and so if I, it's a 20 page chapter, I'm like, oh, cause I'm like, I have to read to the end of this chapter and then I can take a break or then I can go to sleep. And so if I'm in the middle of a chapter, I don't like that. But I want you to take this concept of finding great storytellers. It could be comedians. Y'all, I study comedians too. Jim Gaffigan, one of my favorites. I will study how he tells a good story, how he tells a joke. I study other comedians and it's just something that I believe as creators, we have to constantly be looking at how can I tell better stories? And it doesn't mean that you just have to study the greatest public speakers that there are. I think that you can learn from different types of people. So, oh my gosh, y'all, we are just going on a rant so much. I'm so glad to know I'm not the only person that studies TV. No, I mean, and th that's what's funny, right? <laughs> you can say, I study TV and it sounds better than I just watch a lot of TV. <laughs> but it's true, I do. I, I like to study 
the direction, the production, the actors. I like to know their backstory, all the things. So yeah, no, you are definitely, definitely in good company here. <laughs> So hi, Jacqueline. Yes, so happy that you're here. If y'all have any questions, that's really all I had to share. And even the little story, the storytelling tangent was um, just a little bonus <laughs> that I had for you today. So if y'all have any questions, put them in the chat. Yeah, I like audiobooks too, Diane, but I really like audiobooks for nonfiction it's hard for me to do fiction audiobooks, and I think it's because I like to not be doing anything else. I like to sit down and read because it forces me to not do other things. I that's why that's why I listen to podcasts, right? My audiobooks, my podcast, usually all that's nonfiction. And so I like to, you know, I'll be doing multiple things and getting ready, doing my hair. I'm you know, running, working out, I'm folding laundry. That's when I like to do the podcast stuff. But whenever it comes to a fiction book, which I don't often read fiction, I usually read all nonfiction. But whenever I get a really good book, I like to not have anything else. It's like my, okay, I'm not going to watch TV anymore. I'm going to watch my book, watch my book. I'm going to read my book and enjoy it that way. So yeah, but I agree. I think audiobooks are fantastic. Um, yeah. Too many bend over laughing experience watching Kramer on Seinfeld. See, and this is the thing, like Kramer is fantastic. I think Seinfeld is awesome, but I just, I don't know. I just never really watched it. And I think it's because I was kind of at the butt end of the generation of Seinfeld's like Seinfeld was ending and friends was starting. So I was more of like, let's watch friends and I think that that's probably what it is. Maybe I need to go back. Maybe I need to go back and binge some more Seinfeld and watch. I've watched, I've watched a lot of his stand-up. His special that he has, I believe it's on Netflix, was really, really good and really funny. Um, yeah. Monique, I don't know what you agree about, but I'm so happy that you're here. <laughs> I love seeing your smiling face. Yes, we can learn from different people. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And I think that it's really cool to... Um, Listen to other podcasts that are different from what you normally do. So for me, I'm in the online business space. I'm in the podcast space. I really don't listen to any other podcasting coaches simply because I don't want to take on their ideas as my own. And um, people will ask me, well, do you listen to... Uh, other people to get inspiration or ideas. I mean, I'll see what some people are doing. There's a lot of podcast coaches that are out there doing incredible things. But at the end of the day, I, I really just listen to my audience. I listen to my audience and see what they want because I've tried, I've gone down the road of like, oh, well, so-and-so did this and it worked really well for them. So I should try that. If my audience didn't ask for it, I shouldn't do it. This was my lesson learned because I've done a lot of things that other podcast coaches have done and it does not work well because my audience is like, why did you, we don't want that. <laughs> That's not something that we need right now. We need this from you. And it's just something that I've had to learn over time. But, um, but yeah, learning from different people can be very very inspiring. And I think that that's why, I think that's why I really enjoyed watching Ted talks because it was from, I mean, just every walk of life, there were educators or people with real life experiences, people that had overcome these in, enormous obstacles in their life. And I just think that that's why TED Talks were really cool. Whenever I was first watching, listening to them, it's how I found Brene Brown and found so many of her books. Um, she's a freaking rock star. I really, I really like what she teaches and the things that um, her points of view on shame and overcoming things, I just think are really awesome. And I found her through a TED Talk, like way back in the day, <laughs> way back in the day. And, uh, but yeah, I think it's, it's awesome to learn from other people. I wanted to show y'all. Mm. I'm done with coffee for now. <laughs> Hang on. Let me, let me rephrase that in case someone took that out of context. I'm done with coffee for this morning. <laughs> I will have some coffee this afternoon, but I want it. It's kind of, it's chilly here. It's chilly here in Houston, Texas, which means it's below. Let me see. 
oh, never mind. It's 70 degrees now. <laughs> it was 50 something. It's, yeah, I need to go shut. I opened up all my windows. But look, I made a little, I made some hot tea. Look at this. Oh, my office ladies. How cute is this? I 100% bought this mug. No one bought it for me. It's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. I mean, it's just, it's my favorite. It's my favorite. I love it. I love it. And I'm drinking some matcha tea. But when it gets cold, I just like the warm, something warm. So that's, that's, that's where I am. Y'all, put your questions in the comments. Put your questions in the comments. Oh, I'm just the opposite. I need more focus for nonfiction. I subscribe to about 40 podcasts on podcasting. That's like my classroom. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love this. I love this so much, so much. I live on coffee and sarcasm. You know, yeah, Diane, I feel this. I feel this on a deep level for sure. That That is a great podcast. I don't know which one you're talking about, David, if you're talking about office ladies, but 100% agree. Look at this. Look at this cute little picture. And then they're writing a book. The Dundies, like this is, it's just, it's, it's fabulous. It's fabulous. Mm. Let me know if y'all have any questions. I did also want to tell y'all about, let me pull it up. So we have our November workshops tomorrow. They start tomorrow. So these are our podcast workshops. And let me tell you a little bit about what they're about. And then I will answer some of y'all's questions. So um, let me take this down. Hang on. It's getting a little crazy with everything. So podcast workshops are happening tomorrow. There's two of them. And the first one, make this a little bigger. Let me, hang on. There's way too many things going on here. I feel like there's, should we do this? Or should we do this? No, we should do this. That's going to work, right? I don't know. I'm constantly playing with StreamYard to try to figure out <laughs> how I want this to look. But I, I want you to see me here. I just wish I could like move, like throw myself up in the top left corner, but I don't think that's going to work. But we're having our podcast workshops tomorrow. It's the first time I've ever done these. And what they're going to be is workshop number one. There's going to be two. One's at 11 a.m. Central and the other one's at 1 p.m. Central. So it's back-to-back -back workshops. Uh, you can join us for one. You can join us for both of them. But the first one is all about how to turn a product into a podcast. So people come to me all the time. They have a book, they have a course, they have a blog, they have an event that they've done, they've done public speaking, they have a course, they have a membership, and they wanna turn that into a podcast. Have all this existing content, how can I turn that into a podcast? This is what we're gonna talk about in the very first live workshop, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's something I've done multiple times, and it's something that I think can be really helpful, especially for those of you that aren't new to content creation, but you just need that little like how-to steps to take something that's already existing and turn it into a podcast. So that's workshop number one. Workshop number two, this one's really fun. So a private podcast. I've been getting lots of questions about private podcast. I recently launched my first private podcast. You can actually still listen to it. Uh, if you go to crystalprofit.com forward slash private pod, let me add it up here. So private podcast, crystalprofit.com forward slash private pod. If you go there, you can listen to my first private podcast and I go through a little bit more about the workshops in the private podcast, but the whole point of it was to show you how easy it is to create, show you a little bit about how you can use it to for your next launch. This is really the whole premise behind me doing it is to show you how I did it. I know it's like super, super meta, and I'm like, I don't want to use the word meta now. Like Zuckerberg ruined it. I don't, I, I've, I was saying it a lot. Now I'm kind of over it. I don't want to say meta anymore, but it's okay. It's okay, right? <laughs> we'll just pretend like it's still a cool word to use, but it's super meta the way that I created a private podcast to teach private podcasting because um, I've done it in a few different ways. You could use it uh, in multiple ways and that's what we're going to talk about how to use it for your next um, or your first launch, really. You could use it for your first launch, but it's usually 
something that I would reserve for someone that's a little bit more experienced in launching because you may want to have some other pieces of the puzzle figured out first before you dive into creating a private podcast. But we would love to have you. If you're like, I want to try that in 2022, then this is like, come, come to the workshop. So, and then we have the workshop combo, which is basically just being able, just signing up for both workshops at the same time. And then you get 20% off. It's just a little bit cheaper to buy both of the workshops. So you can enroll in one or in both of the workshops today. Like I said, you'll go to right here, crystalprofit.com forward slash workshop. And it's $47 for each one, or it's $75 for the combo. So you get 20% off if you decide to sign up for both workshops. But they're gonna be a lot of fun and that's it. Nice little, little sweet little message from me there at the end. But uh, yeah, if y'all wanna join us, come on. We're gonna have so much fun tomorrow. If you did already register, then you should be getting an email or you should have already gotten an email actually uh, about how to join and everything else. So do you like comedy podcasts? If so, you should check out Hey Babe. Yeah, no, I have not heard of this one. So I will check that out, David. Thank you for sharing. Um, greetings. You have such a remarkable, healthy, and robust energy and positive imagery. I wanted to ask, are you vegan? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not vegan. I'm not anything special other than very highly caffeinated. <laughs> As I drink my green tea, right? It's because I, I cut my cut myself off with coffee for now. But no, there's nothing special going on here. Mm. I'm going to be recording my affiliate ads for my podcast today. I have two affiliates. You're one of them. Diane, I want to know more about this for your, your affiliate ads for your podcast. So are you talking about dynamic content? Are you recording dynamic content or are you adding affiliate ads like through Buzzsprout, like the podcast monetization. I want to know more about that because I could give you some pointers if that's if that's what you're thinking about doing. Um, yeah, so affiliate ads. Oh, I love talking about podcast ads in general. If you go, go to my YouTube channel, I need to create a playlist for podcast ads because I've had a lot more uh, content about it recently and I need to like Put it all together in one spot so everybody can go find it. But podcast ads for your own products, services, affiliates, all those things can help you monetize your podcast before you have thousands of listeners and millions of downloads. And I think that that's what everyone should aim to do in some regard with their podcast is having their own products, own services, or affiliates that they can use. And by affiliates, I mean... So Diane, if if she were um, endorsing something that was for, let's say, StreamYard, right? Because I am an affiliate for StreamYard. It's first, and I'm, that's what I'm using to go live here. So it's what I think about. But I'm an affiliate for StreamYard. I could create, or Diane could create, an ad in her podcast. You can't say sponsored by. That's like the trick. You can't say this podcast is sponsored by because they're not paying you directly. You know money in exchange for you to say that ad. But you can say, I'm a proud partner with StreamYard and I would love for you to go give them a free trial. Go to crystalprofit.com forward slash StreamYard and check them out. That is a short podcast ad that I could input into an episode. I could use it as baked in content. I could use it as dynamic content. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, go watch my recent YouTube videos about podcast ads because that will be super helpful in understanding how to do that. Yeah, okay, so maybe dynamic. So um, with the dynamic content, I would recommend, if you haven't seen it, watching the podcast ads one that I did about how I use the dynamic content library that's in Buzzsprout because it will show you a little bit more about behind the scenes, how I track how long a piece of a, a piece of dynamic content is out there. Because what I will tell you is if you have loyal listeners, which we all hope we do, right? We all hope we have people that see that notification like, oh, there's a new podcast episode. I want to go listen to it. For your loyal listeners, they will get sick of hearing the same ad over and over and over and over and over again. 
And I think people are starting to get lazy with dynamic content where they put it out there, then they never change it. And I'm not saying you have to change it every single week whenever you put out a new ad. Like it shouldn't be like, oh, every few days, let's change the ad. But I think that if you're posting or publishing a new episode every week, then I would consider using one or two ads per month. Right, it's not super above and beyond. It could be literally for the exact same product, but I think that mixing it up will kind of disrupt your loyal listeners' patterns of how they hear a message, and it won't like it's the same message, but maybe you say it in a different way, or maybe you say it with no music the first time, and then the next time you add music and make it longer or make it shorter. Like keep it kind of you're keeping your audience on their toes. And I think that that's a way to mix it up with dynamic content. Uh, David says, do you think I should film my podcast live on video? David, it doesn't hurt. I don't think, um, and I actually recently did a few, um, a few different videos on my YouTube channel. I would love for you to go check out about repurposing video to audio or podcast to YouTube, YouTube to podcast, because there's a trick and I think that the biggest trick is if you can record a really good piece of video, then you can strip that audio, but it does not work as well the other way around. If you are just recording, like if I were doing a, an audio session, right? I'm just recording my podcast. I'm looking at my screen over here while I'm recording or I'm looking at my notes. Like there's nothing really to, it's not interesting. Let's be really honest. Like, I don't want to go watch someone just staring at a computer screen, not looking at the camera. And, you know, they're looking at their notes the whole time. They're not making eye contact because my camera is actually right over here. But I'm looking at my notes over here while I'm recording. And I never actually make contact with you. So why? It's not entertaining. It's not something I would actively go and seek out to watch on YouTube. So I think that you should record video if you can, but I think that you should ask yourself, why am I doing this? Where am I going to put it? Where is someone actually going to be excited to see it? Um, and th those are my thoughts. I, I did a, a video, I think it came out on Monday. Was my video on Monday? Um, but it was about how to use YouTube and your podcast together. Actually, it was one that came out last Friday. That's the one I would recommend go watching. The one I did yesterday was about auto-publishing your podcast to YouTube and kind of my thoughts on there. So I hope that answers your question, but let me know if you have any other ones. Uh, now that you mentioned it, it might be more of a baked in, sorry for the confusion. No, 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 that's fine. I think that these are, I think these are great. Um, and I think that you should test them out. You should experiment, Diane. Um, I try to never get locked into one way of doing something until I know it works. So try it out, see if, um, if you do it, let's say you do a piece of dynamic content for two or three weeks with a very specific call to action and you notice people are doing it, leave it <laughs> or do, do that, you know, same kind of like, uh, like replicate that call to action just in a different way. But if you notice, oh, well, you know, I did this baked in piece of content several episodes ago then are people actually taking action? So you constantly have to be measuring that. And this is going to be a little bit more work. And maybe this is just for Diane and anybody else that doesn't have experience with this. Don't worry. This is a more advanced strategy. But Diane, if you're able to, I would even recommend having specific URLs just for your podcast that you don't mention anywhere else. You don't put them on social media. You don't mention it on um, like in your email newsletter, in a Facebook group, like any anywhere else. You just put it on your podcast because then you can measure, is this working? I put this call to action in there. Is it actually working? It's more work. Yes, I understand that. And it's going to be a little bit harder, but at least you'll be able to measure, oh, someone heard that on the podcast and they actually went and did it. They took action. So I don't know if you want to do that. I wouldn't recommend it if you're just getting started with affiliates or using, you know, ads on your podcast, but it's definitely something to consider. And like I said, it's a more advanced strategy. It's definitely a more advanced strategy, 
But um, I think that it's something that can work really well so you can see how to measure things in the future. Uh, alternate between two different affiliates for each episode. Yep, I think that's great. I think it's great. I think that um, I don't like like flip flopping back and forth, but that's just me. I don't. I don't. I, I would want to mention it like two times in a row instead, and then two times in a row on another one, um, just because that's like that message of hearing the repetition of hearing it more than once back to back, I think would be more effective than hearing it one time and then you hear a different message. And then you hear this one again and then you hear a different message. Just from a marketing perspective, it sounds more effective to do it twice in a row and then do the other one tw twice in a row. That's hard to say, I don't know why. But um, those are just my thoughts. Again, I think that it would be something to experiment with and see what sounds good. Oh, I was reading David's, yeah, okay, sounds good. <laughs> You're welcome, okay. Uh, thought of that. Not really more work, just a pretty link. Yep. Pretty links are great. It's one of my favorites. Um, pretty links work well. And then bit.ly. And then there's another one that I've, he I've heard other people mention. It's not called short URL, but it's something it's, it shortens your URLs. And, um, any, anybody that wants to create shorten URLs specifically for affiliates, I always recommend it. Just know, uh, Diane, especially if you're going to use Buzzsprout, they already do this for you. But um, always have that disclaimer. This is an affiliate link. I may make a small commission and no extra cost to you. However you want to phrase that, you can go to, I actually have it right up here. Um, if y'all aren't familiar with um, affiliate marketing, you have to have, so this is what Buzzsprout puts right here because I have uh, one or two affiliate links up here. So this is the disclaimer that Buzzsprout defaults to if you add anything within their portal, because this, let me come up here, this whole like section right here is an individual podcast episode, and I embed those on my different show note pages. This is not the plugin player with Buzzsprout, I embed each individual code every single time. Is it more work? Yes. Do I have more control over it? Yes. That's why I do it. <laughs> so when you add in a um, an affiliate, this is what it looks like. This is actually the dynamic content piece right here. And then these two are within my Buzzsprout podcast monetization portals under the affiliate marketplace. If I just threw a whole bunch of terms and things at you, if you're just beginning, I'm sorry, <laughs> but go watch. I have a whole playlist on Buzzsprout videos and you can see how I created these affiliate. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, look, you get it. You get a $20 Amazon gift card when you sign up through, through my affiliate link, but I did not mean to, to click on that. But, um, so anyway, this is the disclaimer that Buzzsprout adds whenever you add an affiliate. But I go above and beyond and I have this as my disclaimer on my website and every single one of my podcast show notes. Every single one. Even if, because prior, I didn't always have an affiliate link there, but I still wanted to cover my rear end. I wanted to make sure I always have the disclaimer on there. And so what I do is when I create a new uh, podcast episode, like my show notes, I go into WordPress and I just clone my previous podcast show notes. So this is already there. It's already, it's, it's already done. I don't actually don't have to go in and type this every time, but, um, but yeah, it just says this podcast contains affiliate links. If you click a link on this page and make a purchase, I may make a small commission and no extra cost to you. That's all that the FTC wants. It's a Federal Trade Commission. You can go to ftc.gov to learn more, or you can just Google FTC affiliates to understand why you have to do this. But it's basically people were taking advantage. People were taking advantage of the system a long time ago, and that's why excuse me, we have to have affiliate disclaimers on any link where we can make some money. So in a nutshell, <laughs> it's like a crash course on affiliate marketing with a podcast. Um, yeah, Cutly, I don't know if that is another, I guess that's another short link. It's That's not one I've heard of. So um, yeah, if somebody's looking for a short link, maybe that's one. 
And if you're on Buzzsprout, then the uh, the disclaimer piece that I just went over will be up there. The post contains affiliate links, make a purchase, may we receive a commission, no extra cost to you. So you could phrase that however you want to. I just always, always recommend people putting the the disclaimer on their own website too, just in case. Because if you've never been, actually, this is another good point. Let's go over here. And this is really zoomed in. Let me zoom out for a second. So this is what my show notes look like. If you go to crystalprofit.com, episode 305, this is what you see. And if you come down here, well, this is this is my workshop, my limited series workshop. If you come down here, I don't know why those pictures aren't showing up. This is an affiliate. This is an affiliate. Like if you click on this, it's going to take you to my affiliate link. And that is why I have those other uh, disclaimers at the top. So um, that's that's why you would see this here because I have this. If you sign up for it, that's where you're gonna go. I also have my tools page. And this is something I recently created. Um, these, these are my favorite tools and I tell you right up front and it's really big, I should make it a little bit smaller, but I also am just like, hey, just so you know, I'm an affiliate for most companies listed on this page. If you click a link and a purchase is made, I may make a small commission at no extra cost to you. And if you are like me and you're an affiliate for multiple companies, I recommend doing this. I mean, I just created a web page that is just for all of my tools. It's crystalprofit.com forward slash tools. And you can go check this out. It's still, it's not like the final finished product, but it's one that, that I created. And look, I have podcast hosting, what I use for podcast interviews, what I use for transcriptions, uh, for Descript is another one, all in one, business Kajabi, live streaming, uh, TubeBuddy is something I use for YouTube, my favorite graphic design tools for Canva, email marketing, like these are literally all the tools that I use in my business and I created one page to house them all. So if you don't wanna create a bunch of smaller URLs, you could do this and essentially say, oh, I'm an affiliate for, or I, I wanna do a podcast ad for Buzzsprout. And if you wanna know more about all the other tools that I use, you can go to crystalprofit.com forward slash tools to check out everything that I use. Now, I'm not an affiliate for all of these. Calendly, for example, doesn't have an affiliate program, but I went ahead and put the URL to take you to a Calendly because I'm trying to be helpful to my audience. Asana, I'm not an affiliate for Asana, but I put that in here as well. But I am an affiliate for QuickBooks, right? So I put that on here. And this one right here, the Creator Studio, this is my social media kit that I use. It's a built-in free tool that it's what I use to post on Facebook and Instagram. So I put all of these here and I just let people know, hey, these are literally all the tools that I use in my business. So you can go check them out, you can try them. And yeah, that's, that, that's another way, like in a nutshell, another way that you can use um, affiliate marketing to make money on your podcast without having to keep up with all of these different URLs and a whole bunch of other things. You could just say, go to crystalprofit.com forward slash tools and have all of your affiliate links there. Have that affiliate disclaimer front and center and tell people, okay, this is, this is what I want to do. This is how it's going to go down. Oh, your tool page looks great. I'm going to have to steal this. Yeah, you are more than welcome to. I've taken it from other people. It was an idea that I saw and I was like, you know what? I, If you have multiple affiliates, like I'm an affiliate for so many different tools and products. I'm like, I just need an affiliates page because people are always asking me, what equipment do you use? What services do you recommend? And now I can just tell them, go to this one specific page and they can find everything. I don't have to reiterate and repeat myself over and over and over again. Uh, do you have a different pretty link for everything on your tools page? If so, are you getting revenue from it? So I do, oh, okay, I see, I see what your question is. So no, I don't have specific pretty links for all of these on here, but all of them are attached to my affiliate link. So uh, the question, if, if I'm understanding this correctly, so Diane's asking, if I have an affiliate link, let's say for Buzzsprout, 
do I change my pretty link, which is just a shortened condensed thing that I can use? Do I shorten all of those if I'm going to put it on my tools page versus talk about it on my podcast versus talk about it on YouTube versus mention it in an email? Do I have different links for all of those? I do not simply because that is a lot to keep up with. So what I have done, and I want to remember all of them, is I will use my main domain, which is crystalprofit.com, slash whatever the name of the tool is. So I just do crystalprofit.com forward slash Buzzsprout, StreamYard, Kajabi, ConvertKit, Otter. Like I created all of my pretty links to make it easier for me to remember because I wouldn't be able to tell you what it was right here on StreamYard on the fly like that if I had multiple different URLs. So if you wanna get more complex in the weeds and have those measurable things, then by all means, I encourage that. But I I don't make so much money off of these affiliates that it really warrants, oh, well, let's dive into how much, how many hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars am I making in every single one? A lot of these are more like one-off here and there, making $20 here or getting credited to my account. That's another thing is not all affiliate programs are created equal. Some of them will pay you a commission while others will just credit back to your account whenever you have someone sign up underneath you. So study your affiliate, uh, I guess, fine print, the terms and conditions that you have. That way you can know, well, when should I take this more seriously or when am I making enough revenue or when am I making enough of the side commissions that warrants doing it more detailed. If you're just getting started, I think that that's a lot. I think it's overkill. I think that it could be very helpful if you can set them up, but I just don't have the time and patience to set up all of those URLs. That's really my short answer. So I have too many other things that I got going on to do that. But I think that you could. I think that you absolutely could if you wanted to measure those results and see how many people are clicking on these particular links. Because um, if anybody's ever used pretty links, you can go in and see how many people clicked on that specific link or visited your uh, affiliate URL using that like very specific um, pretty link, short link, all the things, right? Y'all, y'all get it, you get it. And if you don't, then I encourage you to go watch the videos I have on affiliate marketing. Maybe it'll kind of clear the water a little bit. I'm kind of thinking of getting into print on demand, online marketing, creating my own eBooks and coloring books. Should I attach that to my website or keep it separate? Hmm. I don't know. That's a really good question because it, it's more related to what are you doing right now? Right? Cause I know you had previously talked about, you know, you're getting into podcast management, podcast production, if, if I'm remembering correctly, Diane. So, um, I don't know. That sounds like it would be a very separate business, creating your own eBooks and coloring books. Um, but you could list it as, um, something on like your about page or on your homepage. But yeah, that sounds like a totally separate business idea altogether. And I would say, uh, yeah, so it's just another stream of revenue. I think that it should have its own domain and it should live on its own website simply because print on demand, online marketing, uh, eBooks, coloring books, all that sounds more like a publishing house. Um, and, um, I would definitely consider that a totally separate domain. It just sounds, it sounds so different. I would not go to, um, to a podcast manager and then realize, oh, well, they also do ebooks and coloring books unless that's what their podcast was about and all the things like it just, it's too, it's too different. The, the two mediums are too different. Uh, that would be my recommendation. Yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, y'all, if you have any other questions, throw them out there now. It's, it's your last chance. And I want to make sure that y'all know, again, the podcast workshops are happening tomorrow. You can go to crystalprofit.com forward slash workshop to get registered. The private podcast is coming down this afternoon, like later today, because it was just up for the launch and I wanted to 
be able to teach everybody tomorrow all about the results I found in doing the private podcast for this workshop launch and what that could look like. And I'm just, I'm really excited. It's going to be so fun. It's going to be so fun. And you can check out the private podcast by going to crystalprofit.com forward slash private pod to go listen to my first limited series podcast. The episodes are super short. There's three episodes. They're less than five minutes a piece. You could be totally done with it in less than 15 minutes. But, um, but yeah, I want you to go check it out. And if you did check it out, I'd love to hear from you and what your experience was, but that's all I have for y'all today. So I hope everybody has a fantastic taco Tuesday. Got to bring her up one more time. She's my favorite. And I hope that everybody has a great day and I'll talk to you soon. Bye y'all.